Hey, it's Harry from Audient, and I'm going to take you through how to use ID4 with an iOS device. Now, you don't need any sort of drivers or installation process to work with ID4. You do need to make sure that your iOS device is above iOS 7, though. Now, you do need a couple of extra bits of kit to help you get going. Firstly, you'll need a Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter kit, which can be bought from Apple or from other retailers online or in store. You also need to make sure that you have a powered USB hub. Now, it's really important that you get a powered hub because this is essentially what will provide power to ID4 because iOS devices can't provide enough current. To get all this plugged in, firstly take the camera adapter kit and plug it into your iOS device. And this can be iPad or iPhone. Now you'll notice the end of this has a USB and a lightning port. Now the lightning port is to provide power for while you're recording, which is really useful. Just make sure that you plug it into a wall socket as opposed to the USB hub as this can sometimes cause some issues. Now the USB slot is for the USB hub. So if you plug the USB hub into the USB slot on the camera adapter kit, and then make sure that the USB hub is powered. Now you're ready to plug ID4 in. The iOS device should automatically switch across to use ID4 as its sound device now, but it will default normally to input one. Now, if you want to record with the mic pre, that's perfect. But if you want to record using the DI, you'll need to change it. And this is something that you have to do in the app itself. So that's not something you can do in the settings on the iOS device, it's within the app. So for example, here we have GarageBand. The way you do that is there's a little jack icon here. And if you click on that, you can see input one is selected and all you have to do is click on that and select input two instead. Other settings such as buffer size, sample rate and input monitoring settings are all door dependent. So depending on what app you're using, that will depend how much control you get over them. So for GarageBand, you get control over the input monitoring, but you don't get control over the sample rate or the buffer size. Apps such as Aurea Pro, they do let you control these things. So it's about finding which app works best for your workflow. Now, the last thing you need to worry about with ID4 and your iOS device is that there is no way of updating firmware on the iOS device itself. You'll need to make sure that you plug it into Mac or Windows machines to update the firmware. If you register your product, you will be emailed when there are firmware updates available, so you don't have to keep plugging it in to see if there are any there. For information on how to actually update the firmware, go on to our website, our support section of the website, and there'll be information there. Or alternatively, if you check out the manual, which is available for download on our website, there's information in there as well. So now you can use ID4 and your iOS device, giving you the perfect portable studio solution. For more information, please check out our other videos, or alternatively, go to our website and check out the manual and our other support documentation at audient.com.